life. Let all of you and none of me happen here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Please take your seat in God's presence. God bless you mightily. Now as you take your seat, do me a favor. Look at your neighbor. Tell the person, welcome to church. Do it a little better than that. Tell the person, welcome to church for real. Tell the person, I hope you will have a great time in church today. Say you are in Virtuous Christian Center. The best place to be at this time of your life. Say you are going to be blessed. You are going to be transformed. Say the word of God is going to help you. It's going to be practical. It's going to be logical. It's going to be sensible. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say I am seated with an open heart to hear God's word. Say, I will listen and we will compare notes later. Can you say that to the person properly? Say, we will compare notes later. Say, take your notes as I take my notes. Praise the Lord. Now, because I know what's ahead of us and I know that this is the second to the last Sunday by God's grace in the month of February, I am compelled to run very fast in today's teaching. Is that okay, please? So we're going to be a little faster than regular. I would like you to please listen up. Make sure that your neighbor is not a source of distraction. It is true that you are seated beside someone, but that person is capable of either being a blessing or being a very, very solid distraction. I would like you to please note that you are not a victim of that person's influences on the negative channel. I also want to ask you to please be sure that you are someone who will bring the influence on that person to pay attention. Hunch that person if the person is dozing off for any reason. Normally, I don't teach and people doze. If I teach you, you will stay alive. But for any reason, maybe the person is under one kind of sudden hypnosis of some sort beyond his measure. Please help the person, jab the person, tell the person, wake up, you're on camera. Help me tell the person that, that you're on camera and then we'll see you later that you are a sleepy head. All right, so but do me a favor, pay attention. Let's go straight into God's word. It's going to be a little lengthy today. So I want to cover, I want us to finish on time without much ado. Before I start, there are a few things I must do. Let me do um, housewarming first. Please, if you are a member of this church and you are a worker, please rise to your feet. Please, can we give them a round of applause, those of us seated? May they not clap for you like that. I said you should please let me clap for them. All right. You know what we're going to do? We're going to do it a little better than that. Please do me a favor. Wherever you are, drop whatever is hold, you are holding on, you, you have in your hands. Now give these people a round of applause and let's appreciate God for me. May the Lord bless you. Now some of us, you don't know what it takes to put any of these things together. You don't know what it takes to put camera together, put sound together, put music together, even to come here alone. Please, if you don't mind, stretch forth your hands and let's pray for these people. That their labor of love will not be in vain and that their stewardship will be acceptable unto God. Can we please pray for them that the Lord will bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. The choir, the ushers, the media, all departments, all units, let's just pray for them. That the Lord will strengthen and encourage them more. We have a mission on this land and in this city and I have this much of people. We are very grateful to God and we know we can do much more. Can we just pray for them? I said that the house of God will only multiply and go forward in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this once. You have impressed it in my heart to pray for them. Thank you, Father, because I am doing just that. Whatever you had in mind when you said I should pray for the workers today with the church, I ask, Lord, that you will show in the life of the workers. Let them be encouraged. Let them be fortified to see more results in their life. Let them be resolved. To make your kingdom go forward in virtuous christian center let your name be glorified in jesus name we pray amen please give them a round of applause as they take their seats one more time all right i, I think there's a way we can celebrate highly there's something called celebration can you help me celebrate my work as if it's not clap you want to clap amen thank you amen you know what just happened the, celeb this, the workers themselves celebrated themselves <laughs> when they start uh, now, please, can we celebrate God in the life of our workers properly? Let's give the Lord a round of applause and appreciate God. Thank God for his goodness. Hallelujah. Amen. 
God bless you. Thank you very much. Now, hear me. You may not know how much the devil resists a church until you are involved in one. <laughs> so, I want to let you know, don't, don't underestimate. You know, some of us still see us in this size. You think we are small. Hear what we are dropping. You will know we are not small. Uh -huh. So, I want to let you know, if you, are, if you two were the devil, you would do very well to make sure that this mess ministry does not go bigger. But these people are here with all the challenges, break barriers to make sure they come here, sweat it out on Saturdays, come again on Sundays. We do vigils sometimes. I think I am grateful to God. I cannot be more grateful to God than to have. That's why I will invest anything in them. Get married and see. I will go there with you. I will break boundaries. We will do it together because they are working with me and I'm grateful to have them. Thank you very much if you're a worker here. I want to let you know I don't take you for granted. I will never do it. And by the grace of God, together we'll forge the kingdom of God ahead in Jesus' name. As a church, we intend to do some outreaches. Just in case you are led, we'll be starting some outreaches from the last week of uh, March. The details will be coming out to you very soon. It's called Outreach 22 and Expression 3. We intend to have three expressions of our ministry before the end of this year, by God's grace, just to express growth and to make things a little more proximate to those that are distant. And I want you to be part of it. To that end, we are receiving a lot of items. We need extra keyboards, extra sound, extra everything for the three expressions. Home and abroad, I want us to please be part of it. And I believe that the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. So if you have anything, just meet the church. The church is such a simple system that you can meet any of the leaders. Just tell them what you want to do. And I believe that the Lord will grant and receive what you have for the kingdom and the house of God. All right, let's go into the word of God straight away. Um, yeah, and of course, we have partners who partner with us as a ministry. We'll talk about that some of the time. Now, hear this. Today, we will be speaking, in the course of the service, I mean, of this series, we started on social capital. And if you have been following us or if you've gone online to listen or you've, you know, checked us what we're saying, we are simply saying that there's such a thing called social capital. Now, it's not necessarily a new word, but it's not a common word in church system or setting. It's not a common discussion that we have from time to time. I remember that the blockbuster was the first service when we held it here, and we're talking about how that we should not use spiritual things to cover for social deficiencies. You know what I mean by that? Somebody does not have a good self-esteem, but is using tongues to cover up. The Lord bless you. Oh God, don't confuse us. You don't know how to greet people. You need courtesy. Do you understand? Everything you are doing looks, you can't have a conversation that is not necessarily gospel. It's part of social deficiency. I'm not saying that the gospel is not supposed to be preached at every point in time, but you and I know that life is not all about the gospel. You enter bus. You don't, pre you don't pay bus driver with katuta balaha. Oh God. <laughs> you will understand that if that one we won't take it, uh, landlord will not take that. Amen. Some of us will believe in that Lord. Let the landlord forget his rent. He will not forget. You don't. <laughs> Lord, may the landlord forget. The Lord, the God of heaven, will change the. He will not forget. He's coming. He's coming. That's, those are the things that makes a lot of Christians look very disconnected from reality. I know you are praying. But prayer will not solve low self-esteem. It might give you a lot of power in the spirit, but if that power does not affect how you think and how you behave, or more, you are still in low self-esteem. That's where we started from. And I deliberately released that, you know, conversation so that you will start to understand that spiritual things abide for spiritual things. Yes, they can be appropriated for physical things, but you must let each one belong to each other. Do you understand what I'm saying here? That you are speaking in tongues and anointed does not mean that you are rich. You can be very powerful and be very hungry. Uh, have you not seen the police? The police has a very powerful gun. Very powerful. They, they will tell you, okay, wait till you get there. That's what happens. That you have power does not mean you have resources. These are practical things. You must learn them. And in church, we usually don't have that conversation. Because it just looks like church is a place where we come to develop spiritual gymnastics. And God bless you, maybe the devils are chasing you. Then you start to know how to defend yourself from devils. It's not only devil that is in this life. There are other things. And because it's a month of relationship, and we surely 
we'll talk about relationships as we are doing today. It's important for us to have the conversation clearly about what is God's will. So we spoke about the subject, social capital. We started on a Wednesday and we started taking it on that. Listen, there is such a thing called the capital of life. The capital that makes a man succeed regardless of, you know, um, of, of what anybody thinks. But he has that thing. And we described it as the resource or resourcefulness that a man has that will help him exchange where he is for where he wants to be. I used jokingly, I said the ladies on the streets of Okwebi and Allen stand on the road. What are they rendering? Capital. They have body, physical body. They want to offer sex for what they want to get. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Some of us, we got this social capital from our backgrounds. Our parents taught us something. Yorubas will say, Ile Latin quesh, or rude. do you understand what that means? There are some children that Yorubas will call akotileta. Uh, uh, am I saying it right? Now let me translate what that means. That means that it's from the home we learn character. Is that what it, calls it? Is, is that what it is? That we show the, the goodies of the home outside. Now what I'm trying to bring out is that every home is supposed to be the source of capital for every child. Once upon a time, every child, everyone in this room was born and named on a certain day. And we're given a name to describe our future, given a name with a hope that you'll be great. But somewhere along the line, the deficiency started to show up. Somehow you started to notice that there were things deficient in you. Believe it or not, your parents too were not perfect. They tried their honest best. They meant well for everybody. They meant well. They tried their best, no more. They sent you to the best school that they could afford, at least that they knew about. And it is true that while they've tried their best, that's not the best for your life. That's why God will send you go to church, go to school, get some more learning, learn this about people. You know, some people come to public places, they look shy. It's because they were not taught at home how to communicate. They will hide under that shyness what could have been useful if they were taught how to be self-confident publicly. There are some jobs, visas, interviews that you will miss simply because you don't have a good self-esteem. Not because the devil is working at you. It's because you were not taught how to communicate. Not because, not because you are not a good person or you don't mean well for your life. Simply because the capital is deficient. Some of us did not go to secondary school. You don't know anything. If we talk about algebra now, you will excuse yourself. That's a deficient. When they are not talking, they will say that this brother is quiet. He's only as quiet to the extent of his ignorance. Some of us are even very forgiving of, you know, other people's offenses that we are familiar with. The person used to do this, used to do this. We can understand for him doing this, but we can't understand for him doing that because your background understands when people steal. But your background does not understand when people maybe fornicate. Listen, let me tell you something. The essence of spirituality is not to stay spiritual. It is to stay social. When God came to save us, he made us safe so that we can affect the world. If our Christianity stays in church, it is useless. Quotes me. If you're speaking in tongues, does not affect how you think. It has already started doing its work. The spiritual resourcefulness is not supposed to just stay spiritual. It's supposed to re be relevant. The Bible says you are the salt of the earth. Am I correct, sir? It's not my words. Jesus said it. You are the light of the world. Not the light of the church. When he said you are finished being empowered, he said go to that world. When you go to that world, he tells us you are going to dwell in that world as um, sheep in, I mean, how do you say it now? I'm saying you as sheep in, amongst wolves. Is that what he said? Yes, he said, I'm saying you among sheep, in, I'm, I'm, among, I'm as sheep among wolves. You are going into the world and you need to know how to deal with them. Guess what? He even added and said, listen, as you are going to that world, though, develop the wisdom of a serpent and the gentility of a dove. He's telling us that, man, you need to interact with people. He's telling us that don't stay inside church and just be singing and be feeling like a Christian is. There's more to do outside than inside here. Can I hear an amen? amen? So let's not miss the track. The essence of being saved is not just to escape to heaven. If that was the purpose, God would have killed you the day you got born again. It is smarter for him than for you to backslide in the future. Do you understand what I'm saying? It? So we need to understand that what we are doing is not an end. And that's why I started with that story because before we even talk about you know, getting married, some people don't even know themselves. They don't even know where they are going to. They are satisfied with rubbish, so they take rubbish. A old king like you, if only you knew, God could unveil to you and make you see what you are worth 
then you probably will not negotiate with that kind of lady you are talking to. You are bigger than that. Kings don't lie with peasants. Queens don't lie with rubbish. You are more than that. You were born on this earth for a reason. When God was planning to make Queen Elizabeth, he made Queen Elizabeth. When God made the president of Nigeria, he made the president of Nigeria. When he made the president of America, he made the president of America. After making everybody, he noticed that something is still missing and that was you. God made you. You are for a purpose. Stop getting it twisted, sons. You must understand what I'm telling you. We must get it, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me. We must get it. We must stop playing church and start to play practical Christianity. Glory to God. Are you ready for what's coming today? So I'm starting with that to recapitulate that we are here for a purpose. We are not here just to count chicken. We are not just here to say, oh Lord, I am. Listen, I was saying it on the Twitter. That when we say, Lord, I want to be more like you, it's so that we can have more of him in social space. Not so, you, you want to be a clone of God? For what? Why do you want to be like God? So that you and God will be looking at yourselves. Even God did not stay in heaven. He came to this world. So take he could not hide it. He said he so loved the world. God loved this world. Not the world of righteous people. The world of sinners. He loves it. And then you, you are hating sinners. These people, they are smoking. They are smoking shisha. I cannot stay where there is shisha. Stay there. God came where there was rot. He didn't only stay in the world. He went to hell again. What are you talking about? The purpose of your sanctity is so that you can bring others to sanctification. So you are not yet saved until you save others. You are not until you become a source of hope to people. Listen, I appreciate the glamour of what we are doing these days. And God will amplify this voice in the name of Jesus Christ. But the world needs to hear what I'm telling you. They need to hear it and they will have to hear it urgently. That's the truth. We play a lot of church. Hypnosis, hypnosis, deceptions, cover-ups. Come on, you have deficiencies, sir. You don't even know yourself. How do you want to marry a woman? How would you settle for rubbish? Imagine from a child, you have been making this kind of confessions. I am great. I know what I'm doing in life. I will not be confused. And from your childhood, eh? <clears throat> the trajectory of your life would have been focused. Even the schools you'd have made would have been beautiful. Those schools that you thought would have been expensive, they would have given your children scholarship. Let me tell you something. Whatever you have lost, the advantage we have in Christ is that we can recover. I prophesy recovery for you. Amen. I thought I would hear a louder amen. amen. Whatever capital that would have helped you be a better person. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you the truth. Some of you, your name self is already a disadvantage. Your name. Songo Dimu. I used to have a junior like that. But it's true. I used to tell him, change that name. Change that name. Thank you. Change that name. There are some names that are disadvantageous. There are some names that are advantageous. Oh, yes. That the child himself would like calling himself that name. <laughs> some names you just give a child. The child doesn't like the name Judas. What's your name? Judas. It already there is an association of disadvantage to it. There is an association. You have Judas the traitor. The, the, is he betrayer? Betrayer. Imagine giving your child's name, Abraham. Ah, the guy who's the worst been Abraham. Oh, ah, Abraham. Don't look far. The father of faith. The friend of God. Those type of names can make the child's self-esteem grow. Just give your, your daughter, Jay-Z. What's your name? Jezebel. Ah, how can you be naming your daughter Jezebel? What happened to other names? Give your children names that will give them advantage. What about looks? Some of us, the outcome of our children's look is already a disadvantage. There are children they will come in and they will come and select for modeling. I just want to find Otukuyoyo shift. You know, they will greet him, but they tell him to shift. You know what Otukuyoyo is? Keep looking. So, you see, there are some children that say, ah, look at this one, look, rum, rum. Come, how are you? The child too will smile. Some children, they will just look at you like this. From childhood, they've been frowning. Is inheritance, DNA things. 
bad social capital. Some is about where they grew. From childhood they began. You don't go off your generator. That's why we are sick. I'm, hey, I'm going to... Can you handle the discussion today? Or we should not, I should not do it on radio or TV. Then you'll be watching. Let me tell you people of God. Let's stop running away from the truth. The earlier we face it, the better for our lives. So those things you know you have been deficit of. You never knew what it meant for your father to give your mother a peck. He would beg. People will <laughs> peg. She will be for Tony. Peg. Peg. Daddy peg. As I'm saying this, I'm afraid. Then you will now say you want to give your wife peg. If you don't train yourself again, no more peg will never come to that family again. Peg fire. That was a free on peg. How do you give peg? You never saw it. Where do you want to learn it? On TV? Listen, TV is planned. Anything that enters camera is planned. Say that's how it should be. That. Yeah, the, the guy's just me. My name is Jeff. Your name is Geoffrey. Can we marry tomorrow? Oh, but that's not how people marry you. There is a real life with real encounters. Am I making some sense? Before you become a victim of Tinla. Hear me well. So what I'm saying, people of God, is this. Hear the thoughts. The thought of my heart is to strengthen us up so that we don't dodge the areas where we are deficient. Don't bring deficiency into your new family. Make sure you recalibrate the things that you are missing in your family that is good for your, fu your future. There are things you are missing. Your husband will be saying, talk now. Nothing. Talk now. Not, the day he gets angry, he goes somewhere else. You say, why are you lying? And you vow to me that you will always snuff me. When I was asking you to talk, you did not talk. You see how that deficiency is making the guy lose steam for the wife he loves? Eh? You'll be bringing 19 year old behavior into 32 year old relationship. So, I speak as a servant of God. That this character will not be found in you. Yeah. And that whatever background issues have made you miss blessings, God will help you recover them. Yeah. Some of you, you know what it feels like that you have met better people. Amen? Better people. Better, but they background, no just, no just jail. Everybody we're meeting were rubbish people. You two have to strive. That's why we are teaching you these things now. Tell someone to come to church and say it too far. Stay there and your destiny far. See, why we are saying this is because God will always make in every... I'm not the first person to teach this type of thing. I might not know the person, but I'm sure I'm not the first person to teach things like this. But people never receive them. They say, is that what we want to eat? Social capital. We think it's social capital. Now the two will go chop with that. And your child is growing. He will grow to know that kind of... That wicked smell of generator that will not make people survive. You say, now so God called him. That's not how God called it. You determine what you will see in God. Don't, don't lie on God here. I'm here to defend him. <laughs> uh, saying things are not true. Who told you that this, that's what God planned for you? You say, hey, whatever we be, we be. Who told you that? A singer. You now want to put it inside Bible? No, it's not so. You determine how you... There's one of my daughters that is here. She, she came from far away Katsina. If she tells you a story, you will never know she's from Katsina. Because now she's a babe. Imagine when they told her, let's go to Lagos. Said, I'm not going to Lagos. Mommy, mommy is you. I want to stay with. <laughs> God wants to change your life. You are insisting. You now come to Lagos, meet the deputy governor of Lagos. Now married to the deputy governor of Lagos because you left Katsina. You say that's how God planned your life. If you had stayed in Katia, you will know that that's not how God planned your life. Are you getting what I'm saying here? The choices we make based on our proclivities and our sense of judgment moves us closer and closer to the best of God's plans for our lives. So, I just reminded us of the discussion and we are saying social capital is fundamental. We said wisdom is the chief uh, master of every social capital. We said it is important that everyone gets wisdom. Some people are so, I mean, you know, happy about their moral rectitudity. You know what I mean by that? The Bible.
Bible says in Matthew 25 that there were 10 virgins. How many virgins, people of God? How many virgins? A little louder. Guess what? The Bible says five were wise and five were foolish. You can be a virgin and be a fool. Pastor, I'm not the one I said it to. What I just said is in Matthew 25. He said there were 10 virgins. Five were wise and five were foolish. I'm not the one that said virgin is a fool. Virginity is not wisdom. Pastor, are you supporting that people should lose their virginity? God forbid. God forbid. I never said so. I don't support it. Let's be clear. But I'm telling you that you have kept yourself doesn't mean you are wise for marriage. So you must know when to evolve. There is a wisdom of chastity. Praise God for that. That's good. But much more than chastity, the only criteria for a good marriage is not that I did not fornicate. You need wisdom. Some people pride themselves, I've never cheated before. God bless you. Those that have cheated, God bless them too. Everybody has a journey to make. Some with cheat, some without cheat. The important thing is that make your journey. Can I hear your amen? amen? I said here also that in fulfilling life's calling, you will not or may not be able to do it alone. Thank you. You have enough for me today. I'll need it. That you may not be able to fulfill life's journey alone. And that your relationships in your life will be critical to how much of your life's purpose you can fulfill. Let me quickly say this. Marriage or relationship is not your purpose for living. Marriage is not a purpose. Marriage is not a purpose. Marriage is not a... You see how I'm stressing it? Just so that we can clear our doubts today. Listen to me, people of God. Marriage is a means to an end, not an end in itself. Just like I said now that God made the queen, God made the president, and God made you. You are for a purpose. One of the things I liked about biology was when I learned about the ecosystem. I don't know if any of us remember that conversation. I liked that conversation a little. When I heard that even the bacteria in the air have purpose, the jams in the floor have purpose. Ah, I said I must have purpose. Sir. That was what Jesus was trying to say. That if the birds of the air have, don't lack food, that God does not forget to feed them, how can you go hungry without even doing anything? God will make sure somebody brings something to you. Ah, yeah. Everything has purpose, sir. Just find your purpose. The birds' purpose might be to pollinate plants. Am I making some biology here? So will I remember the biology lecturer? Plant pollination. Butterfly we go. Beep, 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 beep. Pick the, what do you call this? The pulling grains, am I? From hibiscus. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Plant it upon. You know what I'm saying. Everything has a purpose. Don't make a mistake. Marriage has a purpose. It is not the purpose. There are plenty of people that will not marry and be fulfilled in this life. Don't let us confuse ourselves. More than just getting married, find a purpose. When you find one, then it's worth finding who will fulfill purpose with you. No purpose is small. No purpose is small. The function of the cuticle on this little finger is when you have weak low, you will know the value. Yeah. You will the dislocate. The way you will be feeling, eh? You will feel like cutting the fingers. Huh? It will be doing boom, boom, boom. <laughs> You'll be like, God, God, this little finger, why is he pinning me? Everything has purpose. Let alone a whole you. You know you're a mobile factory. There's reproductive system in you. There's excretory system in you. There's digestive system in you. Inside the same you. <laughs> There's skeletal system. There's every system inside this body. We are literally like a moving car. Yeah. I want to draw to your attention. Have you known your purpose? That's where we start from. Don't think 
purpose is to preach. You know, I said it last two Sundays. The purpose doesn't have to be to preach now. Not everybody will preach. How long does it take us to preach? Preaching is a very simple part of my job. In fact, it's probably the simplest. I was saying it, and I mean it. The simplest part of this job is to preach. Administration is the most difficult part of my job. I is preaching. One hour, I'm gone. So what am I doing from that time? To, I'm just waiting for you people. <laughs> Look well now, it can be, Abby. <laughs> what am I saying? I'm trying to say to you, find your purpose. Look at your neighbor, tell the person you are here for a purpose. Tell the person again, say you are here for a purpose. Say, find your purpose. Do you know, do you know, people of God, that there are, there are, there is no other person like you on this earth? Are you aware? Do you, I'm not even trying to make you feel good now. There is literally, any doctor here will tell us. Doctors in the house, I'm sure you can witness it. Or nurses, or whatever. See, there is no other person on this earth that has your dental formula. When people's body perishes and they can't even get their fingerprints, I'm told they have to use their dental formula to locate them. How do you know people that they burnt into ashes? Is their dental? Because these teeth will never disfigure. Now so you go be, ha, till rapture. <laughs> it will be looking at me. <laughs> perfect it, and only you in the world has it. Ha, God has a purpose for you, sir. What kind of careless God would that be to be so specific that it cannot be replaced by anybody? He went ahead to give you a special fingerprint. Every finger has its unique fingerprint. If you were not told, you will not know. I'm telling you now, go and check it out. It is true. And you are so special, nobody can reproduce your fingerprint. Nobody. Try and see. Let the best copter come. Even photocopy cannot make it happen. <laughs> that bad. Oh, you are not ordinary. Oh. You are not ordinary. There is a reason God made us. There is a reason. Now you don't know does not mean there is no reason. There are many things you don't know that exist. There are many things that can, your phone can do that you don't know. That your phone. That Infinix. Not your own. No. <laughs> What am I trying to draw your attention to people of God? You need to touch base with your purpose. That's, the way, that's when marriage can start to have more meaning. Because the longer part of your life will be with the woman you spend time with. If you are spending it with someone that is not in line with what will give you joy, you'll be a very miserable rat. Simply because you are not paying attention to purpose. If you are married, don't worry. There's a solution. But if you are not, good chance for you. Now, we said that it's likely you will not be able to fulfill that purpose alone because whatever God tells you to do in this life, he doesn't want us to do it alone. We see that in scriptures. Genesis 2, he says that, he says, and it is not good. God said, you can sit down so that others can see. He said, and God said, it is not good that man should be alone. Somebody say, I'm not alone. Not alone. Fighting like you rest. He said, I'm not alone. The Bible says, woe to him that is alone. Woe. For being alone, there's a curse. Ah, it's not a good way to be alone. So whether for marriage or for purpose, you need people. Yes. You can't do it alone. Now, that means your social interaction with people will determine the kind of people that will be attracted to your space. The way you behave. Your sense of dressing. Do you know that they can bounce you because of how you are dressed? Hello, do you know how you are dressed can make people tell you to please excuse us? Hello? Do you understand what I'm saying, sir? Uh -uh. Dressing can be a key password. You can even have the IV and they say, please, you can't enter. The way you are dressed, and then you are bothered nobody's asking you out. Ma, ma, your dressing is bad. Your dressing is bad. Your dressing can be inappropriate, not because the dress is bad, but it's inappropriate to the system at hand. That same dress might pass for somewhere else, but it's not appropriate for this particular event. What then will help us know how to dress well? Wisdom. Someone say wisdom. Yeah. You are a lady trusting God for a relationship. You need to wear things that will make people know that you are available. Praise God. Can I hear an amen? As a sister. You know some people say, no brothers, post them in the last three months. Men, I will ask what are you wearing? Because God designed that men should be very useless sometimes. <laughs> you know what I just said? Oh, yes, I said it. 
God designed it that men should be very useless. Somebody should ask you out. It's the design. Don't get embarrassed. It is normal. Man should like woman. It is because most men are getting tired of being rejected. They are now liking fellow man. Oh. Uh, that's sort of our. So God ordained that man should like woman. Omo. If that day stops, something has spot in God's plan. It's normal. Somebody should like what you look like as a woman. Ah. Did you see the poem Adam came out with when he saw Eve? Bone of my bone. I think women underestimate the effect they have on men. He, he said, why, 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 are they, why is he just looking at me? Mm-mm. Don't you know what you look like? That's the problem. Women don't understand the effect they have on men. You are beautiful. Very powerful. Oh. See the men looking gentle. They, they know what I'm saying is true. They are just not sure if I mean. Powerful. Just the, the look of the woman. Even angels are jealous. Woman. The last item or person I should say. God created. With the best of his abilities. Obamaro, women, even women look at themselves and say, man, woman, pass woman. Ah! Hello? Am I in the right church here? This Kilo day, you will see human beings say, now person be this. Oh. Women, let me tell you something. I will come to you. I hope time will allow me. What God has made in you is too much. That's why I'm hoping I will make a small attempt to converse about, I have my notes filled up. In fact, filled up. And I'm not just talking theory, I'm talking practical. The day I saw mama, mom misbehave. <laughs> I was preparing for lectures. I told my guy, Jibola, Jiblo, Jibola, he says, sir, who is that sister? <laughs> And I'm coming to that very soon because I knew I didn't want to be a pastor that didn't have a fine wife. I knew I'll be struggling. I'll be struggling to defend my wife. I don't struggle to defend her now. I knew then because of purpose. Solid. Look then, look then, people notice me. I shall go read me now. So, so hear me well. Are we there this morning? Are you ready for some discussion? So, I'm coming to that part that when it comes to making a decision, it is sweeter to decide in the line of purpose. You two as a woman look like someone going somewhere. That the person that wants to take you is coming. Don't look reckless. Don't look of a spiritual leader. Amen? Yes. Don't look over spirituality. Yes. Because your over spirituality already defines your tone. Look sweet. There's something called sweetness. It can make up for beauty. Beauty is not sweetness. As a lady, you can, every lady can be sweet. Your choice of perfume. Don't use malam ausap. Don't use powder that will make you look like a gugu. Don't do hair that does not have name. You are experimenting. When you find someone, then you can tell him, I want to experiment. Not when you are looking for someone. There is time for everything. Can I hear your believing amen? amen. Now see, nobody's asking me out. We were designed to ask women out. That's how God made man. It's not a prayer point. The day it stops, there's a problem. Even married women, they're still asking them out. Pregnant women, they're still asking out. What are you saying? Hello, am I making some sense? It is how God designed it. It is not you that made man. Don't say men are scam. Men are scam. 
That's how God made man. Check animals too. You see that? Animals. Very, very funny. They like female. It's like that. It's what it means to be a man. Masculinity is one of your favorite gifts to femininity. You must be masculine. Hallelujah. Now let me quickly touch on this. Concerning love, you are compelled to love everybody, but you can only marry one person. You can only marry one. You are not allowed to marry everybody. That's why it is the person who has the greatest aggregate to your purpose and your emotions you should settle down in marriage with. Because there are many women on earth. Some are good for a season, but they are not good for a lifetime. Some are good for a reason, but they are not good for a lifetime. Not every woman means well. Some are afraid of finding a future. An average woman starts to think of marriage from 12. <laughs> One of the ladies that we thought we were going to marry, she was telling me when we later met that, well, I, I actually thought, that's what she talked about, I actually thought from about age 11 that we might make a good future together. Eh? Age 11. You have been thirteen. It is subconscious of a woman. They think it. Who will I spend the rest of my life with? Most women are far more mature than their average age mates in men. They've gone farther than you. They might not know book, but they know relationship. And God bless you, women can smell destiny. Ah! I will stay with this one. They will lock him down. Now, if you don't have that gift as a woman, just keep looking straight. But if you have it, please, can I hear your amen? amen. There are attributes in women that it is part of femininity. Or is it femininity? Whatever the correct word is. So what am I drawing to your attention today is that we are going to look in the next couple of minutes now about lasting relationships. How, why and how. Lasting relationships, why and how. You know, I'm making efforts to try to you know, emphasize important things concerning this social capital as it relates now to relationships. Because quite a lot of the things I'll be saying from now and into next week. Next week we'll be having questions and answers, Mama and I, on the table. Let's give us a round of applause there. So, I'll bring a brief teaching um, and then we'll have the conversation. But notice that God's plan for us, and this is the truth, is that relationships will take us to our place of purpose. What do I mean by that statement or this statement? Is that you cannot succeed alone. You know, I said that earlier on. And that means you need people in your life. But it's not everybody you need in your life. Praise the Lord. Please, if you don't mind, can you put your hands on your eyes? Say, Lord, I receive seen eyes. To recognize the people that are important in the success of my destiny. Help me, Lord, not to chase them away. Let me be attracted to them. Let them be attracted to me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So what I'm saying here is that there are people that will come into your life to help you succeed. And by success, I don't only mean business success. Because a person can be a success in business and be a failure as a father. Do you agree with me? You can be a success as a boss and be a failure as a husband. Only the office likes you, but your wife does not. Yeah. There are pastors that only the church members like them. Their wife does not like them. Yeah. What do you do? He has capital for work. He does not have capital for home. And that's part of why I feel we should talk about lasting relationships. And I wrote here quickly, threats to lasting relationships. We've spoken about why relationships last. Jesus was talking in John 15 verse 16. He said, I want you to bear forth fruits, fruits that will remain. So God wants us to have meaningful and lasting relationships. People that will come into your life that will count. Now let me say this to you. This is not absolute, but please, 
be, you know, that's the thing about wisdom. Wisdom is applicable, so it's not just absolute. Try in your life not to be the one to cut people away. Just try it. I was trying to say that thing on Wednesday. I don't know if I was able to deliver it. But I'm saying it again. Try as much as possible not to be the one to cut people away. Try. Now, there are people you run away from. But don't cut it. You hear what I just said? I don't know. I know you have questions. I might also have questions. But let the questions come first. But just say, as I said, it's not absolute and it's not in all situations. Try your best. Not to be the one to say, don't talk to me again. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then I say, don't talk to me again. I don't need you again in my life. If you don't want to talk to the person, don't talk. Don't cut it. If you don't want to talk, don't talk. Nobody's forcing you. The real proof is that you don't want to talk again. You don't talk. You don't need to announce it. In life, you need more friends than enemies. Hello? Life is already difficult by design. Don't make it difficult on purpose again. Life is difficult. The way life is arranged is like hurdle. 100 meters dash. How do you scale? You jump down again, run again. So, why put more hurdles in your way? You need more friends than enemies. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? Each time you win with people, you keep a word. You are building, you are reducing the bridges. You are reducing the, the problems of your life. When you, you keep a friendship, you keep somebody that annoys you, but it's you that let the person go, you know you are not the one that cut it. That person is feeling he holds you on already. Do you understand what I'm saying here? In the wisdom of life, you will need it. Don't, don't cut cut relationships. This is my theory. I didn't say Bible. Please, on the, I have a right to suggest something. I didn't say you must know. This is not Bible. When it's Bible, I'll tell you it's Bible. This is not Bible. But I just have observed as much as is possible. Don't, because someday God might just be pleased to use anybody to get to you. It's the truth. It's the truth. Now, somebody said, I don't want to cut my ex. That's why I'm, I'm coming for you. No. I said, don't talk to him. Does not mean, I mean, don't cut him. Does not mean you should not, I should, should continue talking to him. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? <laughs> so, somebody comes, I'm saying categorically, there are people you need to let go, but don't now continue keeping a conversation going. Are we making some sense to ourselves here? So, concerning that relationship matter, I see here and I noted that God wants us to fulfill relationships with certain people. Please, if you have a note, quickly, write five people that <clears throat> write the names of five people that you know have been relevant to your life. Five people, five top people relevant to your life. Now, write it now. On your phone, on your pad, on whatever thing you have. Five very important people to your life, your personal, family, or um, domestic life. Who are the five people you can say are most important? Write them down. And I have my reasons because your life is going to look like what those, those, that association looks like in the next five years. You are not going to likely be better than that. If the people rolling around you are broke, busted, and disgusted, Trust me, you are joining for broke, busted, and disgusted. What is the lifestyle of the five closest people to your life? Now, let's quickly talk about what I consider here to be our ability to choose a marital lasting relationship. So, before that, I was going to call, talk about threats to relationship. Number one is pride. Pride. Everybody needs some pride, but when your pride is too much, you are threatening relationships. Thus, the code of good relationship is service. 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 Number two, stereotypes. When you insist on stereotypes or poor philosophies, you are going to threaten your relationships with bad philosophy. Number three, over righteousness 
over righteousness. And I use that word deliberately. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 16, the Bible says, do not be righteous over much. Why destroy yourself before your time? Some people like to form over righteous. Listen to me. Don't use your light to prove somebody is a sinner. Use your light to prove somebody else can have light. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say here. You don't come in as light and say, you see how, how dark you are? How dark you see how your light is dark? That, that's what most Christians do. You know, repent. Repent. If you don't repent, you go to hellfire. <laughs> like a popular mom with you. See, we don't need that stuff, Oga. Why am I saying so? Light does not come to just tell darkness you are dark. Light lights up darkness. If your light is not lighting others, it's not light. That's my point. Light and darkness were looking for each other. Darkness was abusing light one day. And said, oh, light, useless light. Very useless. Our light, never use you. Ah, ah. So light had the rumor and said, you abused me. What did I do to you? Okay, I'm coming over to see you. Each time light visited the village, darkness was not around. Each time he came, darkness was not around. He came one day, where is this darkness that you people are talking about? Because when light shines in darkness, darkness becomes light. What am I trying to say? Don't use your light to make others feel condemned. Your righteousness. You know me, I don't used to lie. Oh God, God bless you for not lying. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Keep that character. Don't change. But don't make other people feel small because you are big. Don't make other people feel dark because you are light. Don't make other people feel more wrong because you are right. This is a philosophy I have observed from scriptures. You may want to learn from it. Sometimes it's just to make you have a feel good effect of yourself. If you really care about the other person, what you're interested in is making that person have light. Not about how bright you are. Do you understand right to say here? Yeah. Well, can't think about it. I didn't say it's a must. You can argue it. You can argue or write whatever, whatever you want to do, but I'm just telling my own truth. Uh -huh. So, I wrote here, I said, God is going to give you a relationship. I've, I've given you some threats to relationship, right? Yes. Then I want to start, I want to open a conversation here that I will complete maybe at the next opportunity, which is marital relationships. And I want to say here that towards your marital relationship, God is usually going to test you with a, a regular relationship before a marital relationship. What that means is how well have you kept friends? The Bible says that he that must have friends must show himself friendly. Some of you after church, after church, bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. Wait small. Wait, the brother is still gathering morale to come and greet you. You have gone. That's part of why it's not her, nobody has come since. You are too purposeful. There's a time for everything. Let your head down. Show you are available. Amen? Brother, you to swallow saliva. Drink water drop cup. And please, go and meet that sister. And say, hey, how are you? That's all. Nothing will happen if you do it. Can I hear your amen? Amen. So please, do me a favor. Sisters, you have a right on earth to be toasted. If it is becoming spiritual, just let me know. You know how? Not three times communion I go give you. When we finish with the communion, those, because it's true, there are spirits that create veils on people to make them men blind to them. But that is not something that is the first option. It is when your case is extreme. Do you understand? So it's not just as I've said it now. You say, maybe that's my problem. No, 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 no. It's not likely. If it's a problem, we will know. By now, I would have come to you. See, but I'm saying to you, take it seriously that you are a beautiful woman. If you don't say, I am, nobody says, thou art. I am beautiful. 
And that brings me to the point I want to close with today. Two things. Acceptance. Acceptance. And definition of your sexual preference. I'll close with that today. Are we blessed this morning, please? Quickly, what do I want to say about acceptance? Acceptance requires that you acknowledge the reality of your person, your purpose, and your unique being, and that of others. You see, what I realized, you know, I was telling us about how that we should understand ourselves, understand life, understand people. The last one I not tell you, if you listen to that message, well, I said four, but I mentioned three. The fourth one is what I want to mention today. Understand the opposite gender. The opposite sex. Understand people is important. How do people respond? How do people treat things? If you keep people bored in a room, they will soon react. You can predict them. You cannot say, understand, you should not be surprised that ah, people, okay, look at what happened that time when the speaker flared up. I was literally intimidated. I was taken aback. And I was saying, if me, I feel like that. I imagine how people, you must know, people are thinking too. They might not always be right, but they are not fools. Can I hear your amen, please? I know you people, almost everybody that comes to this church, very intelligent people. They are listening to you. Say rubbish one day. <laughs> you will know that they are not stupid people. Nobody here is stupid. I must know people. I must respect people if I want to succeed in life. So I say, it doesn't matter. All power belongs to God. Or more, he has given some of that power to people. Oh. If they don't buy your product, you will go broke. Oh. <laughs> or more, do you understand what I'm saying here? He said, all power belongs to God. I agree. But he gave some to people. Yes. 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 So you must understand yourself. Understand life. What is life? Life is that that brother is posting that sister. Stop embarrassing them by looking at them. It's normal. Hello? It's normal. It's life. Life evolves. Life evolves. Understand people. People don't forgive. People forget. That's people for you. People forget what you've done for them. They've forgotten. They promise, I will give you time next week. He has, as he said it, he forgot. That's a human being for you. People are ungrateful. You can't do enough. That's people. If you don't have this wisdom, you'll be struggling. You say, I don't know what is going on. You, your Christianity will not have bearing. And the last of it is understand the opposite gender. Quickly, I said acceptance. And what I want to quickly say about acceptance, quickly, quickly, is that accept your realities. Know your truths. Accept yourself. Accept your background. I'm not saying that is where it will end. I'm saying accept it first. It is the opportunity to acknowledge your history, your roots, and then the opportunity to change it. What I mean by that is, you might have wished you were born into a rich family, but you are not born into a rich family. Hello, ma. Did you watch Inventing Anna? How many of us have watched Inventing Anna? No, don't tell me nobody here. Please. Please, if you've seen Inventing Anna, it's a film. Can I see your hand up? Wow. Assignment, everybody. <laughs> ah, go and watch every, and I'm serious. Go and watch inventing. You've seen it. God bless you. At least I, one person should have seen it. You have seen it. You just want to raise up your hand. You, Abby Alfred. Have you not seen it? Ah, I'm surprised. All right, hear me, people of God. Everyone, please try. It's just a film. Relax, okay? There's no deep thing about it. Just watch it. <laughs> So people just used to make me feel I, I, I'm not spiritual. I'm very spiritual, though. Praise the Lord. Do you, don't, you should know I'm very spiritual because I'm not just your regular pastor. I'm not just your regular pastor. Praise God. And I have no apologies to be in that. God who sends me is the one that marks my script. Go and watch Inventing Anna. You will see how somebody is living with an imagination of herself in her mind, creating a father that she does not have. I'm telling you, go and watch it. I'm, I'm, I will, I, if I even thought I was the last to watch it, please try to watch it, please. Hear me well, people of God. What I'm trying to say is accept your reality. 
and this includes women women when you look in the mirror and you see like your head is big don't feel bad or your head is small don't feel bad no i'm serious i'm serious i'm not even joking right now you must understand what that means that means that god had looked upon you and designed you to be like that i'm not even trying to be funny here right now you are beautiful please trust me you are wonderfully made and only you if everybody accepts it for you you don't accept it for yourself it's still useless that's my point until you look in the mirror and like what you see nobody can like you for you like you should like you for you and i want to say that's the beginning of capital to look in the mirror and like what you look like that's why if you don't have a mirror i don't know how you want to know what you look like you need a mirror in your life get one today look in the mirror i'm serious if your mirror is broken is a is an attack on your self-esteem <laughs> On your social capital please please get a mirror up look in the mirror and speak to yourself i am handsome i am attractive that is power that is power when you look at something and accept it and still speak to it i'm teaching you the power of making progress in life accept our church is like this. I accept it. If I want to grow, I must first accept we are like this. Do you understand what I'm saying here? That we don't have ACs. That we don't have the space yet. Accept first. Then you can correct. Most people have dodged acceptance. My head is not big. My head, your head is big. <laughs> This thing I'm saying, this thing I'm saying is powerful. You are wishing you were born to a rich father. Accept you were born to a broke man. And look in the mirror and say I'm going to be better than this. I'm unstable in character. But I'm going to change from here. Yes. This is the secret of life. It's Accept I don't have a car. But from today, my life is going on this track. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Don't dodge it. Accept you. That's the power of life. Because anything that change wants to change and is not original, it will spoil again. So you have to meet the original thing. Look at us here. I've accepted it, but I'm not stopping here. Hello? We are going to multiply in this Lagos. Hmm. Remind them we did not bury any cow. It is the power of God that supported us. I can say that under this God. Tell them when we come. We did not make a mistake. We deliberately grew. Small by small. Till we fill this city. It's not a mistake. But you will not happen if you don't accept it. You say, we're not small. But oh God, we are small now. It's not a shame. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can I hear your believing amen? amen? This thing I just told you is God that told me. It's God that told me. Accept. Then start correcting it. Number two your sexual preference if you will choose a woman to settle with or a man to settle with please choose someone you are sexually attracted to i use that word i might not explain it today but it's important to state it that the major difference between your closest friend and your wife of the same gender that's opposite gender to you that is if you're a man your closest friend that is a woman and your wife. If you are a woman, your closest friend that is a man and your husband. You understand what I'm saying? Essentially sex. 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 And by sex, I mean every form of intimacy. So not just 
the act of coitus. I'm talking about everything intimate there. Everything your friend can do, your wife can do. But nobody is allowed to lie down on that bed with you. And there's a reason. It's for social capital. It's for social capital. So that your credibility will not be ruined. So that you will not be confused around town. So you will not become irresponsible among people. I want to close with this sexual preference. While I celebrate you marrying someone who has character, please don't forget someone you are attracted to sexually. Because the major thing sex gives us an advantage over friendship is sexuality. We will continue next week. Or Wednesday. Have we been blessed? Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout another hallelujah. The last and the loudest hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let's rise up to our feet and give God thanks this morning and just bless his holy name and thank him for his